Good morning to you. I'm in the Church of Echoes this morning. God's word echoes through the centuries into our hearts. Well, that's something that I've always believed and um, will continue to believe by the grace of God. But there's a movement today in the world and uh, it comes under this name, deconstructionism. I think it comes in many forms, but this morning I'm just going to be looking at Christian deconstructionism. And uh, I came across a video yesterday. I came into my feed. Um, I don't quite know how, because it's something I wasn't really looking at. I hadn't really considered much about. But uh, it was by a lady called Jen Fishburne. And um, Jen is or was... Uh, very much a, uh, a staunch, strong, powerful, believing Christian. At least that's the impression that one is given when you listen to her background. She comes from a Christian background and um, grew up learning scripture, memorizing scripture, great chunks of it. Um, I believe she took part in, in, in various sort of situations where her knowledge was tested in the Bible. Um, it was a long video that I was listening to. It was actually called Why I Left Christianity. And uh, she comes across as very sincere. And she explains sort of piece by piece. It's nearly an hour long. But she explains piece by piece that um, as she learned scripture and taught scripture and then went to the academic seminaries to learn and to become a scholar in the languages, that it began to strike her that things were not all what she'd originally believed as far as she was concerned. And I began to watch this video and I, I didn't really want to watch it through, to be honest. Um, and not because I, I felt that my beliefs were going to be rocked or shaken or anything. I, I, I've been a Christian now for 50 years. But I just began to sort of look at it from an objective point of view. And as I began to listen to her, I began to sense that there were things that were missing in her Christian life that I don't think she'd really addressed. And unfortunately, what happens with folk like this is that they get, as we say, so involved in their Christian activity, um, the learning, um, hearing the gospel, um, applying it in certain ways. Um, but at the same time, um, there's a place where in the heart there isn't quite that depth of, of realization as to who the living Christ is. Because it can all be up here. But there are various levels of it being up here. And how far do we allow it to sink into our lives? And I began to look at this and I began to think to myself, what was missing in Jen Fishburne's um, testimony of her falling away or allowing herself to fall away from what we would call uh, traditional Christianity. And it starts with one doctrine that is different to other doctrines. It can start very small. And with Jen, she became a preterist. And a preterist, of course, those of you that know, is somebody really that doesn't believe in the... Um, the futuristic understanding of, of Scripture. Everything has been fulfilled in round about AD 70. Not even round about, but at AD 70. They begin to see the Scriptures. Um, of course, the Bible is a Jewish book, but at the same time, they begin to see this, this only, only inside the concept of it being a Jewish book. Um, Jen was speaking about the, uh, the meaning of the word Gentiles and that it wasn't really referring to non-Jews in the same sense. And uh, I haven't got time really to, to go into all the different details that she explained, but her understanding in preterism was that the Bible, having seen everything fulfilled, and uh, that the Bible is, is only a book for Jews, and for, for um, understanding it in terms of, of the way that God spoke to Israel 
and uh, in the Old Covenant and in the New Covenant. Um, so there was no real place for, for anything that is outside of that. And I began to see that uh, as she took on board this, this preterist understanding, she began to sort of move away from the spiritual concept of the Bible. What I mean by the spiritual concept of the Bible is the way that God speaks to us as individuals in every nation and in every heart. And that was the purpose of Jesus' coming. And I began to think about Jen again in terms of what kind of testimony she really had. And the conclusion I came to was that she really wasn't born again in the true sense. She hadn't really come to understand the changing power of Christ. And sometimes we can inherit Christianity from, from our parents or from uncles and aunts that are very godly. And then get onto that train, as it were. But yet, although you're physically on board, spiritually there are aspects of it where you're just not there. Because you haven't had that deep, real experience of knowing Jesus Christ as Saviour. And as I say, she took on board this, te this teaching and then it went further and it seemed to progress. And um, eventually she came to one conclusion, that the Bible is basically historical fiction. So she'd moved away completely from her Christianity, she'd moved into preterism, and she'd come out the other side, believing that the Bible is not the inherent word of God. It isn't the understanding of what we as Christians traditionally believe, that God's word is holy, that God's word is set apart from all other books. And what Jen is basically doing is she's changed that concept. She's changed it inside herself by believing that the Bible is, although it's full of good things, it isn't God's word. And that leads you on, doesn't it, into all sorts of other ideas and I began to question myself as to what it was that I thought was missing in her, her situation and I thought well, what about sin how does she address sin and then she began to talk about hell and I think the idea that I think she was saying in her video that hell is in the understanding that we have of it doesn't exist what about prophecy Therefore, looking at prophecy is, as I say, if you're a preterist, you see it as fulfilled. But then, of course, those of us that are futurists, and of course, seeing what's going on around us all the time in the world, um, we can't see that, that everything was fulfilled in AD 70. What about miracles? What about the healings and the things that Jesus did? And she even spoke um, of the fact that there was no evidence for, for Jesus having existed. And so once we start going down that road, she, had, she, she tried to have a little, a little bit of a, dis, put a little bit of a disclaimer in the video by saying that her concepts were not new age, but she spoke of energies, she spoke of vibrations, she spoke of electromagnetism, everything that moves us away from a personal God, aligning itself, whether she regarded herself uh, as, as a, not a new agent, it, it's irrelevant because she was talking about the fact that she began to see things in terms of science. And scripture addresses this directly. And as I say, it all starts with sometimes moving one degree away into a concept that is not completely biblical and then developing a whole idea around it and of course Christians have been doing that all through the centuries this is nothing new but this is how Satan works isn't it he wants to draw you away he wants to take you away from the fact well this book is yes men have written this book um, it's just a, a load of men's ideas you can get better ones from all the philosophies that are in the world all the other religions that are in the world they've also got good ideas but unless we, set, unless we say that this is set apart from everything else, then we're, we're on that train of going down the road towards deconstructionism. 
And it can happen to many of us. Maybe it's happened to you. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking to someone this morning who, uh, in the, if you could tell me in the comments, if you have your doubts about certain things in the Bible and that they've put you on a train towards being deconstructed away from Christianity. Anyway, for me, I have to stand on Scripture. And I want to just share some verses with you that um, I believe reinforce that. And looking at, uh, two, at um, Colossians 2, verse 8. And it's a warning. A very straight, simple, easy warning. Beware, lest any man or woman spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. The centrality of Christ is what the scripture is talking about here. Because it goes on to give you the doctrine. I'll just go on here in verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Jane was talking uh, about um, the Trinity. She was denying the Trinity. She said God is a family. She simply made that as a statement. She didn't elaborate. But once we start to move away from concepts that are given to us quite straightforwardly in the Bible, we begin to develop our own ideas. You may want to listen to the video yourself. Um, maybe you will come up with some conclusions. But my fear is, is that although we may get uh, drawn away by all kinds of other ideas in the world, but it's when Christians are drawn away by denial of what we've learned traditionally from Scripture. I believe that's more subtle than just being drawn into a completely false religion. 1 Timothy 6.20, these are all familiar scriptures, all familiar. O oh, Timothy, Paul says, that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science or knowledge, falsely so-called. Interesting, isn't it? Oppositions of science, falsely so-called. And of course, we're seeing it all the time, aren't we? I speak a lot about the, the artificial intelligence, all the things that are happening in the world concerning that and the way that man is gaining this knowledge. And at the same time, he's gaining these knowledge, so Christians, too, begin to doubt. They begin to see the, the flood of things that are coming in um, from so many different areas. And we begin to see that we're becoming more and more of a mi minority. And the pressure is on. The pressure is on to stay constructed to Christ, the head of the body, in him that dwells the fullness of the Godhead. I and my Father are one. Those are the truths that if we allow them to go from here to here, we can't deny them. We can't deconstruct them. Hebrews 13, 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. It goes on here, of course, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. It's in the concept of that, but at the same time, don't be led astray by diverse doctrines. Don't be led astray because it's the grace of God that has saved you. Established with grace, there's a foundation of grace, a foundation of understanding that what we have been given isn't something that we've gained with knowledge. It's been given to us by God's grace and love. And I didn't hear Jen use the word love once in the testimony that she gave 
about what, what had happened to her. But the strange thing was, as I watched her, because it was quite a close-up of her face, I could sense emotion when she was talking. In fact, she was, she was actually, her eyes were down and she was reading really from some sort of a transcript, I think, that she had. So she wasn't actually speaking directly to Cambria as I am to you. And um, I sensed emotion inside her. I sensed sorrow, actually. Uh, I sensed a brokenheartedness. I don't know if that was something inside her or something that maybe she was tussling with. I don't know. But I sensed that she'd, she'd obviously been on a road of difficulty. She'd learned so much and uh, had done so much, and yet she'd come to these conclusions. And she, she said it two or three times that she felt the Bible was historical fiction. And it's sad for me. But um, I just want to hang on to really one more verse that I want to share with you. Uh, actually, two more. I'm going to share 1 Corinthians 2, and um, verses 9 and 10. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Simple as that. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. It's by the Spirit that we have Christianity if we want to call it Christianity. It's by the Spirit that we have truth. It's not by academic learning. It's not by tussling with, with words, whether it's Greek or Hebrew or Latin or whatever language. It's the Spirit that speaks through this book. This is what makes this book different to every other book. It's the Spirit. The Spirit of the living God takes the words of man and does what it says in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God-breathed for teaching, for reproof, for instruction, and for training in righteousness. All scripture. And so I'm going to leave you with a statement this morning. It's all or nothing at all. All or nothing at all. You either believe the words of this book, you either believe it's the inerrant word of God, or it's just historical fiction. Put it on the shelf with the rest of them on the bookshelf because next to it can be the Buddhist's um, book or the Book of Mormon or the New World Translation by the Jehovah's Witnesses or you can grab any kind of wisdom you'd like and say, yes, isn't that great? It, it even lines up with what that other book says, you know, the other book, the Bible. This is no other book. This is the book. And one day we're going to be judged by the words that are written in this book and judged by the, the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. I would say to you today that um, what you've learned, what you've been taught, if it matches up to the experience and the power, this is the thing, is the power of Christ in your life. And is he in my life? And constantly looking towards that. As, as Paul says, we're pressing on upward to the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Deconstructing something is going backwards. It's a bit like having built something and then you look at it and you think, I didn't build that right. So you tear it down piece by piece. You try and put it back in a different way. And, you know, are you satisfied with that? No, let's deconstruct a bit more. And we start pulling everything apart. It's as though we're analyzing God. And then, where are we? We have to come to the same conclusion that Jen came to, historical fiction. And uh, for me, this is historical fact. It's prophetic fact. It's truth. And one day we're going to be called, called upon, some of us, to give our very lives for that truth. Lots of people in the comments to, to Jen's message were, were very complimentary to her and how brave you are saying the things you said. 
Some people have posed it and said actually that they'd experienced the complete opposite, that they'd actually reconstructed themselves, which I found a real blessing. That there were people there that had, and as many of you like myself, who'd come from the, the, uh, the drug world of the 1960s and coming out of that and coming to know Christ as Savior. I know that he, he constructed within me um, the truth of his word. It was a complete opposite. So I'll leave you with that today. I know it's a bit of a different message, but um, it requires all of us to think deeply about who we are, where we are, and what we are in Christ. And as I say, we either accept this word or we reject it. We can't cherry pick it. I've said that before. So, so have a blessed day. Enjoy what you do. And fight the good fight. Continue with fighting the good fight.